Hello, welcome to Free School Exam Preparation. Today, we're going to talk about Edexcel International AS and A levels statistics. Why? In this lecture, we'll discuss Chapter Two: Representation and Summary of Data. Okay, so first we take a look at the types of data. So usually there are two types of data. So the first one is descriptive. The second one is numerical. And for the descriptive, we can also call it qualitative. And the other one we call it quantitative. So let me give you one example. So if you want to record the nationality of students in your class, so in this case, what kind of data are you going to use? So because we think about、um, the students is from UK, the students is from Japan, the students is from Singapore. So in this case, I think descriptive data is better, right? Because there is no particular number represent the nationality of the student. Okay, let's say if you want to record the、um, like final test result for、uh, like the students in your class. So in this case, because we have this. Ninety marks, sixty-five marks, you know those kind of things. So I think we'd better use numerical data. Okay, so for numerical data, there are two different types as well. So the first one is called discrete, and the second one is called continuous. So let's say if we want to record the height of students in the class. So in this case, the height will be continuous data, because you think about just in general, the height is between one point five to two meter, right? So any number within this range can be reached. So you may have a student whose height is one point six five. You may have a student whose height is one point seven one. You may have a student whose height is even one point seven zero six. So this is continuous data. And how about discrete data? So think about for the exams, right? We only allow、um, the whole number mark. So in this case, let's say the marks is from zero to one hundred. So the marks of the students'、uh, results will be discrete data because you can't find any student with result sixty one point two three five, right? So this is not allowed. So continuous means we have a range of values, and va any value in this range. Can be reached, and discrete data means we have a range of value like this one. However, only specific values can be reached. For example, one mark can be reached, five marks can be reached. However, sixty-one point two three five can't be reached. Okay, so once we understand the classification of data, maybe we can take a look at some ex、um, exercise questions. So this is from textbook page eight, question one. So we want to know if the data is descriptive or numerical. Building height. So we use number to represent the height of the building. So in this case, it's numerical or it's quantitative. And how about shoe size? So think about your shoe size, like seven, eight, nine. So these are numbers, right? So in this case, it's also numerical data. How about color of jumper? You may have a color in、uh, you may have a jumper in white, in black, in blue, in red. So in this case, it's not number. So we use、uh, descriptive data or qualitative data. And names of students, this is descriptive. And time spent waiting in a queue. So think about that: wait there,、uh, wait in the school canteen for like two minutes, five minutes, like one minute. So we use numbers. So this case is also numerical. Okay, let's take a look at question two. So we want to know if this statement is true or false. So first, weight of apples. So think about the apple usually weigh between I don't know 100 gram to 300 grams. So is it possible we have an apple which is 201.5 gram? It is, right? So is it possible we have an apple's weight is 251.6 uh 36108? It is also possible as long as you have a like a、um, scale with like higher precision. So in this case, it should not be a discrete data. So this is a false statement. So the weight of apples should be continuous. Okay, next one. Number of apples on the trees. Think about how many apples on the tree. Zero, one, two. Maximum, let's say, five hundred. I don't know if it's、uh, reachable or not. But can you have like one point two five apples on the tree? It's not allowed, right? So in this case, it's discrete. So it's correct, which is true. 
and amount of time spent on whatever things like doing your homework. So you can do your homework within one minute. You can also do your homework with 1.2 minutes, 1.05 minutes, or like 10 minutes. So like any number between the, let's say zero minute to, I don't know how long it takes, maybe 60 minutes can be reached. So in this case, amount of time is continuous. How about the car colors? So we say it's uh, quantitative. Is that quantitative? No, right? So because the car can be black, can be white, can be red, can be blue. So those needs to, we can't use numbers to represent the car color. So in this case, it's not um, quantitative, it's descriptive. So I, I can't remember this is quantitative or, or um, qualitative anyway, but for sure we know this is descriptive. Okay, so this is for question one and two on page eight. Okay, now let's just take a look at how we can organize data. So sometimes we may have thousands of data. So how do you organize them? You can use frequency table, right? So frequency table shows, let's say, uh, if we have 1,000 students and they take a mock exam, and the mark is from zero to, let's say, 100. Okay, so we can say, uh, here is zero mark, and how many students achieve zero mark? Zero. How many students achieve one mark? Zero. And then continue, how many students achieve 60 marks? Maybe 30. How many students achieve 61 marks? Maybe 20. And how many students achieve 90 marks? Maybe 100, right? So this can be our frequency table. So basically, on the left of this table is a value. So depending on what value you are measuring. So in this time, uh, it is a score of the um, exam result. And on the right-hand side, we call this frequency. So this 30 represents that we have 30 students achieve this 60 mark. And zero represents that we have zero student achieve this zero mark. And 100 means we have 100 students who have got a mark of 90 in this exam. Okay, so this is frequency table. But still, it looks quite complicated because here, think about we have marks from zero to 100. So we may have 101 rows. So in this case, we can use something even more organized and we call this grouped frequency table. Okay, let's just take a look at some examples, maybe the one on the right. So we have a weight of kilogram and we have this frequency. I can't remember like what kind of weight it is. Let's just assume this is a weight. Okay, so now we have many um, samples. So let's say in total, we have 60 plus 30, 90 sample or 90 pieces of data. Okay, so here shows like eight um, sample uh, has have weight between this 1.2 and 1.3 range. And 28 is 1.3. 28 sample uh, achieve the weight 1.3 to 1.4. Maybe I think that's cats. I don't know. It's just let's assume it's cats. Okay, 32 cats have weight between this 1.54 and 1.5 range. So this is suitable for large amount of data. And also it's suitable for continuous data. Because think about the weight of cats, they are continuous number. So we can't list them out as the one we just shown you for the student score. So in this case, we need to use a grouped frequency table. Okay, so we can do the same thing for discrete data. So think about the student's mark, right? So we can have zero to 10 and 10 to 20, 20 to 30 and continue. And then we have 90 to 100. So here is the frequency. And this one is a score. So in this case, we may have like how many uh, students in this zero to 10 range, how many students mark in this 10 to 20 range. Okay, so that's grouped frequency table. However, there are two types of grouped frequency table. So we need to clearly understand the difference between these two tables. So let's take a look at this table for the cat's weight. So you see this is 1.3 here, right, in this group. And this 1.3 is also showing up here. And also this 1.4 is upper bound, um, upper bound for this group, and 1.4 is showing up here. 
So we call this type of grouped frequency table no gap table because 1.3, 1.3, 1.4, 1.4, no gap. However, if you look at this one, so that's a lifetime and frequency. Um, so here we notice for the first group, we have this 5.9. But for the second group, we start with 6.0 rather than 1.9, uh, 5.9. So this is called grouped frequency table with gap. Okay, and for each type of table, we need to understand the class boundary, midpoint of class, and class width. So first, what is class? Class is just a group. So here we have class 1, class 2, class 3, class 4. And this one we have class 1, class 2, class 3, class 4, class 5, class 6. Okay, so let's just take a look at this one by one. So first, for this no gap table, so what does 1.2, 1.3 mean exactly? Let's say if I have a cat uh, which has a weight of exactly 1.3 kilogram. So does that mean you should classify the cat in the first group or first class or you classify this into the second class? So in this case, 1.2 to 1.3 represents weight between 1.2 but can reach 1.2 but strictly less than 1.3. And for the second class, we have 1.3 less than or equal to x and less than 1.4. So always the left side can be reached and the right hand side is strictly smaller. Okay, so we have this 1.5 and 1.6. So we just talked about the cat, right? So if the cat's weight is exactly 1.3 kilo, uh, kilogram, so in this case, the cat should be counted in the second class. Okay, so this is a class um, boundary for these um, cat classes as well. So for the first class, the class boundaries are 1.2 and 1.3. And for the second one, the class boundary is 1.3 and 1.4. And for this one, class boundaries 1.4, 1.5. For the fourth class, the class boundaries are 1.5 and 1.6. Okay, let's take a look at the class boundary for this width gap table. So because we have 5.0, 5.9, 6.0, .0, so there is a gap. So think about if I have something, I don't know what's something here, and lifetime is 5.94. So should I put into the first group or second group? Okay. So in this case, we have the class boundary here is between this 5.9 and 6. So for the first class boundary, we'll have upper boundary is 5.95. And the lower boundary is because we know the gap is 0 0.5, so it should be 4.95. Okay, and for the second class, the class boundaries are 5.95 and 6.95. Still, this one can be reached, this cannot. And for the third class, we have 6.95 and to 7.95. And this one is 7.95 and to 8.95. And next one, 8.95 to 9.95. And finally, we have 9.95 to 10.95. Okay, so those are the class boundaries for this width gap table. Now let's take a look at the midpoint of class. So the midpoint of class is just the midpoint or it's an average between these two boundaries. So for this one, it's just 1.2 plus 1.3 over 2. And this one, 1.3 plus 1.4 over 2. And 1.4 plus 1.5 over 2. 1.5 plus 1.6 over 2. And for this one, it will be 4.95 plus 5.95 over 2. And this one will be 5.95 plus 6.95 over 2. And then you can continue. Okay, actually we notice, let's just like take a look at this class 2 here, right? So the midpoint for class 2 is 5.95 plus 6.95 over 2. And if I give 0 0.05 to the left, so this becomes 6. 0 0.0 plus, and then I take this out, 6.9 over 2, right? So that's exactly these two ends average. So sometimes you can just use these two ends to do the calculation, although the values are the same. 
However, you need to understand the idea behind it because we are using the boundary. It's not these two numbers. Okay, class width. So it's just like the upper boundary minus lower boundary. So for this one, it's just 5.95 minus 4.95, so which is 1. And for this one, 6.95 minus 5.95, so it's also 1, and you can continue. And for this one, it's 1.3 minus 1.2, which is 0 0.1. And this one is 0 0.1. Okay, and usually you can see like some... Um, the group frequency table with equal class widths among different classes. But sometimes when we see some classes, they may have um, like a um, wider range and some class has a narrow range. So depending on the type of data. Okay, so that's how we organize the data. Okay, so that's everything for this lecture. We hope you have enjoyed it and wish you good luck with your exam. If you are interested, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Free School Exam Preparation. Thank you.